Welcome back, everybody. Love is holding all the cards. Always kept me in the dark. I never thought I could shake this heartache. Now, if you think you've tuned into Gladiator, you're half correct, because this was the set for it. And I suppose I do look a bit like Russell Crowe. I wish. Well, John is sort of right. We're at 8 Ben Huado, which is a UNESCO-listed heritage site, and it's on the old route that the Bedouin and Berber people used to take through the Sahara Desert. But you might recognise it because it is one of the scenes from Gladiator, also Game of Thrones, and I think even Indiana Jones. Yeah, well, all around this area is just all the movie sets where they do all the mm -hmm. filming for things like this, and it's right near an airport, so they just fly the stars in and they stay around this area. That's why we're here at the minute, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Look, what amazes me when you come to places like this is when you watch the films, you think it's just on the film set, it's not real, but mm -hmm. literally, like the whole country is like this with the buildings, where they're, they're almost like mud huts and yeah, things like that. It's just amazing. incredible. Yeah. We turned a corner yesterday when we were driving, and I said to John, that looks like it's been made with AI because it was all dry and then there was like an oasis with palm trees yeah. and it just looked like everything you see in the movies. Best thing about travelling. So when I say mud hut, this is what they made it out of and I think it's amazing. So basically all they do is they get mud, straw, stones and sometimes manure as well. They compact it all together and just leave it out in the sun to bake and it goes absolutely solid. Now, they do do your normal traditional brick and mortar houses over here as well, but this whole city behind us is built using this way. And I just think it's incredible because they're using all their natural resources and also they reckon it's really good for like keeping the heat out as well. And you can see here, look how they've done it. So obviously they've built it with the bricks, then just rendered all over it. The only negative to it is when the weather gets to it, it breaks it down, so it is constant maintenance. So we've met a couple of lovely blokes walking around and they were telling me that while these are now shops, they used to actually be their family's homes, but they've all relocated to the new city on the other side of the river. And that's because most of the properties here don't have electricity. One other guy was also telling me that his grandfather used to be one of the nomadic Berber who would make the trek here all the way from Mali. So they'd come through Western Sahara and the Sahara Desert and then get to here. 52 days it used to take them. Can you imagine that? Just the dryness and then it's so hot during the day, but also, freezing cold at night. Just incredible. Well, in answer to Russell Crowe's question... Maximus's question... If you come here, you will be entertained. Are you not entertained? <laughs> but uh, it's only 80 pence to park here, I think, isn't it? Yeah. And it's free to get in, so well worth a visit yeah. anyway. And I actually came here just before COVID with my mum, and we did a guided tour around, and it was ace. So um, I would recommend that w Was you entertained then? I was entertained. She was entertained. How long do you reckon we can milk that one for? Look at this little beauty, the old 4 before Sprinter. Now, before we came on this trip, I thought this sort of vehicle was probably the, one of the best campers to have, but after being in the old Defender, and especially because we thought we'd struggle in it with the space and everything like that, but the fact that it's such a small footprint and the fact that you can get anywhere in it, I'm even more confused now what's the best vehicle to have than I ever have been. And on the topic of vehicles, we've been getting a lot of questions lately about whether having a 4x4 is really making much difference to getting park arms. I have to tell you, she is a bloody beauty. But before we got in the Defender, like I was saying before, like I, I really thought we would struggle just for the space. Yeah. But I have to say, probably the only thing I think we struggle for space on is when we're cooking. Yeah. That's the only time I think it's hard work being in this Defender. But to actually get the park ups, I knew they'd be good but I never thought they'd yeah. be as good as they are. One of the huge advantages of this is because it's so much narrower. Yeah. So like a lot of the paths we've been to to get to park ups have been really narrow and also had loads of overhanging branches. So the lower height makes a big yeah, difference Yeah, well that's too. the thing, like that sprinter that I just showed you, like some of the spots we've got to it, we still couldn't have got it to it with that no. because of the, the trees overhanging or even the departure angle with the overhang on it. So yeah, yeah. what do we do? Where do we go? It's fun though, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I 
as you can see, we've got ourselves a nice little mountain drive today. We're driving through the High Atlas, taking us from the kind of desert regions down into Marrakesh. But the road here is absolutely incredible. It's so twisty and windy through the mountains. Yeah, isn't well, it? it'd be brilliant to come on a bike. Like we've seen so many bikes, buggies, and everything like that. Yeah, do these roads. the roads in Morocco have really impressed us, haven't they? Yeah, well, really good quality. The good thing about it over here is you can get everything. You can get the sand dunes, you can get the mountain passes on the rocks, you can get the normal roads. Out into the forest. Just absolutely everything. But one thing we have noticed driving this road is about the rock fall, which is a bit scary to be honest, because we noticed it a little bit at the beginning, just a few kind of rocks at the side of the road and thought, oh, that's a bit of a worry. Yeah, then they get bigger and bigger until pretty much there's been a massive rock fall and they've had to close the road because it's covered the whole road like it's just incredible yeah i've never seen anything like no. it so just hoping we can get to the bottom and uh not get something plop on our heads yeah but uh, overall i'd say we've been entertained by the roads out here haven't we? for the love of god last one i promise well i'll tell you what i'm speechless and you know what's done it a coach now hear me out so we just went past this coach and sometimes they've got trailers on the back, haven't they? But they're normally little trailers for the luggage. We went past this one and the trailer was as big as the coach. So we goes past it, it's got windows in the back. It's a rolling hotel, so everybody in the coach has got like a bedroom in the back and they even do like six by six versions of them too. Well impressed. Well, we've made it to Marrakesh, and as you can see, we're parked up in a car park because there's not much in the way of wild camping in the city. But it's only £10 to stay here for 24 hours, and it's nice and secure, right in the heart of the old Medina. So let's go see what Marrakesh has got to offer. <laughs> surprise, surprise, we're in the food hall. Would you expect anything different of me? But uh, this place is mental, I tell you. Now, like, I've experienced this sort of thing before in like Turkey, but... Uh, <laughs> This is next level. The thing is, you have to be like almost so rude and just say like, thank you, thank you, and keep walking. Because you'll never get anywhere, but um, I think we'll be able to find someone to eat some food. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, this way. Yes, well. What do you want to tell me, boy? Good job when you sit down and get a bit of rest. <laughs> Grubs up. Now all of these stalls are very similar. It's just how funny the guys are getting you in to be honest. But tonight we've got couscous and vegetables, mixed grill, bread with two different kinds of sauce and some grilled veggies. I can't wait. Mental. <laughs> That's the only word I can describe for this place at the minute. It is such an experience though, to sit there and they're all going, you come here, same shit, different place. Yeah, and like they've all got numbers. You remember my number, no, I remember. And then when you're trying to eat dinner, there's people coming around giving you sweets. Cigarettes. Yeah, like uh, t-shirts. Paintings. You name it, so yeah, yeah absolutely just mental. incredible. But, but the, the food, food was delicious mm, anyway. Yeah. Really good, really good but food. But it's freezing. Like, yeah. It's quite warm during the day at the minute. It's like 20 odd, isn't it? Yeah. But it drops to like below 10 at night. So yeah, we're freezing. And it's now. windy tonight. So we're literally shaking. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this footage because yeah. it's so wobbly. So but... we're going to go back to the van anyway, but we're going to come back into the, into the town tomorrow. And we'll show you around. Hopefully it's a bit less manic. Morning, everybody. Can you hear it? Silence. I tell you what, for such a central city park up, this has been quite peaceful. Apart from our neighbours having a Barney last night. Oh, it's so good, right? So I think they're Spanish, right? And I think the Spanish are a bit... Very they, passionate. Yeah, let's say passionate, because one minute, proper shouting, slamming doors, like he was punching the bonnet and everything like that. Next minute, the vans are rocking. Now, I don't know what was going on, whether they were fighting or loving, but... Uh, but yeah, they were... It was amusing anyway. But even though Marrakesh was a bit manic last night, I'll tell you what, it is a beautiful place. Like, I was mm. expecting it to be like a lot of the other cities where it was a bit more... 
a like, bit less well a bit maintained. Poorer, really, and that, yeah. yeah. Whereas you come into it and it's just incredible, isn't it? It's almost yeah. like Dubai vibes a bit. It is quite palatial, I would say, the way that what all does the that mean? like <laughs> like a palace. Oh yeah, palatial. It's very palatial. <laughs> Um, but with all the like manicured palm trees and yeah. they even have some of these signal things I don't really know what they are oh, they yeah. hide them in things that look like a palm tree rather than just putting them on a telegraph yeah pole. there's really money cool. been spent here put it that mm. way but I tell you what the old food weren't too cheap last night was it no it wasn't I mean it's our fault because he said Lloyd well, said what well, we wanted a mixed grill and then he was like you want vegetables you want couscous and we're like yeah 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 obviously that's ordering all extra things off of the menu but so. the thing it was like he said mixed grill for 70 uh, which is like seven quid say each yeah a bit less than that and then yeah that, that you just assume that, that sort it comes of came with all the everything. bits but yeah, yeah. it was 40 quid wasn't it yeah which, um, which isn't yeah. too bad like when you think English standards but when we had the meal the other week when that was 20 quid and it was the same sort of thing and I'm not, I'm not moaning or anything like that no. I'm just saying that um, yeah it's not going to be the cheapest place to get food those which you would usually think yeah, it is, it's a so. big city isn't it but yeah. um, just something to be aware of if you come and have dinner here yeah and as well as the manic <laughs> mental <laughs> it's worth it for the experience <laughs> tell you what though there's some posh motor homes about anyway let me show you so we've got the old Germans in the old Sprinter 4x4 I like that one I see and we've got the old Benamar the old Spanish we actually had one of these we had one for about three weeks and we sold it because we didn't really like it it weren't for us and we've got the Heimer now I'd love to try one of these I think they're called A classes but they reckon because the front window you get to see so much more and the old Finnish look on the fins and Polish and this is one of the older ones I love the old classic ones though can't beat them that one's a bit of a posh one that's a Finnish one as well and then another A class as well again another beauty what are they no more fins look loving the fins now this is why John can't be left unattended to vlog because they're not all from Finland, they're all from France. Same thing, isn't it? But, uh, Definitely not the same thing. But when I was walking past the doors, all the doors were open, they were outside sort of like looking and I bet they were thinking, what's this bloke on about? Same way from Finland. <laughs> but um, what do you reckon of my old glasses anyway? Genuine Ray-Bans. I got them from the old Looky Looky men yesterday, didn't I? <laughs> Jess made some friends yesterday as well, didn't you Jess? I did. They have a dog. The old Germans. And I tell you what, I'm impressed with his braces this morning. Let me show you. I'm loving them braces. So one thing we've been asked quite a lot is do we feel safe here? And I have to say, I feel just as safe walking around here at night as I do in somewhere like London anyway. I absolutely agree. I'd say I felt unsure at times, but absolutely I don't feel unsafe. Yeah, and there's a huge police presence here. And obviously uh, last night there was an army presence yeah, as well. Yeah, there strangely. was, particularly around the mosque. I don't know if that's because it's Ramadan or that's normal, but um, yeah, it does add a bit of reassurance. Yeah, and then it? also on the roads as well. We still haven't found out why there's so many on the roads, but they seem to just check like papers and loads and things like that. But when they do pull you over, they're ever so friendly. And yeah. even to the locals, like they pulled over some lads, lads yesterday last on night, And they're just joking around yeah. with them. So. so what I would say is personal space, you'll have none of it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but feeling safe, you'll be all right. First things first, a juice. I'm going for orange this morning. Shukran. So as you already know, Today's mission is to show you around Marrakesh, but I have set myself another mission, a mission that I was born to succeed at. I'm going to show you all the treats too. Well, as much as I love Jess's haircuts, apparently this bloke here has got a gold medal in it. Let's see what you can do for me. <laughs> I think he said I had big ears. Show <laughs> uh, everybody the gold medal. Yeah. Is this the gold medal? This is the gold medal. Look at that. Look. 1996. Brilliant. How come he doesn't use a bowl like you do? <laughs> mm. Do you reckon he could make my bald scot grow back and all? <laughs> with his gold medal. Maybe. What about this bit here? Ah. <laughs> you know what I love about things like that? Even though we didn't speak a word of each other's language, we still managed to have a good laugh anyway. I know, he was brilliant. But, he was uh, such a legend. I think you've been sacked, Jess, because... Uh, 
I, why are you doing that? I, I was worried about looking a bit stupid, to be honest, going into a barber's <laughs> like that, because normally I'm looking pretty sharp, and I so. But I think you could do with them um, maybe sorting this bit out now. He did a good job anyway. He did, he did. Look at these little beauties, look. You get 10 of them for 50 dirham, and they're all these like handmade little intricate cakes. They've got loads of almonds in them, pistachios, lots of honey. Should we give them a go? Looks like you've already given them a go. <laughs> I couldn't wait. Mm, this is good. I don't know if our gold medal barber's as good as he, we think he is. He's cheeky gits, I keep asking him if I need a haircut. I show you one thing I'm absolutely loving about walking around here is all the colours and the handicrafts and the textiles and the smells as well. It really is an amazing experience. And I will say that walking around Marrakesh in the day is a little more relaxing than the night time. There's a lot of hustle and bustle still, but it's not quite so in your face. The other thing we've noticed about Marrakesh is it seems to be a little bit more expensive than the other Moroccan cities we've been to. Not by British standards, of course, but it does seem to be just a little bit more pricey. Well, the day was going so well until a terrible tragedy occurred. These flip-flops have been with me through the outback of Australia, the jungles of Malaysia, they've hiked mountains in Slovenia, but today in Marrakesh they have died. Buster Plugger! Well I've done the gentlemanly thing and I, I've given her my flip-flop so I'm a bit barefoot, half barefoot. <laughs> He's walking back to the car, everyone keeps offering him their shoes. But don't you worry about this. You know what this calls for? Triple T. <laughs> I'll tell you what people, if you think that Havana's are good for the bin when you bust a plugger, you got another thing coming, because I've got something special to show you. So first you've got to get your box of spares. Now I've got nuts, bolts, washers, fuses and everything like that. Now what I normally do at home is just drill a little hole through this and then you get a washer that goes over it and then you put a split pin through it and then that stops it coming back through and they're good as new again. And if anything, they're better because they pull it tighter a bit as well. So the only thing is we haven't got one that fits perfect, but don't worry, we've got a blue terminal to do the job. So I'll just cut the end off of that. But before I do that, I haven't got a drill bit, but I've got a terminal tool. So that's what I'm gonna use to core plug this. We now have our hole. So you push that through there. And the next thing you do is you get your blue terminal and then what you're going to do is you're going to snip off the end of the blue terminal like that. And then what you do now, you push the plugger through and then you push that over the end of it. So as you can see, that's gone on there nicely and it's just past the hole. And what I've done for the extra bit of protection, because Jess is a bit of a calamity, to spread the load a bit, I put the bigger washer on as well. So next thing I'd do is put a split pin through there. Now I didn't bring any split pins, but that's not going to stop us, is it? So all your ball joints have got split pins on them and normally what they do is they fold them over and then they leave the big tab, which thankfully someone's done. So what you do is then you just cut a bit of that off. There's your pin. And then all you do is you push your pin through the hole like that. And then you just get some snips. Normally I'd fold it over so you get a better bit of protection, but obviously this one I can't. So you just snip that the same size as the washer Pull it up, jobs are good un. So you know what I'm going to say, don't you? These flip-flops, brilliant little bit of kit for the workshop. Well, he might be my hero, and he might have skills MacGyver would be proud of, but after kissing my foot when I've been walking around Marrakesh all day, he won't be getting any smooches for all. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you what, we've seen it all in Marrakesh. We've mm -hmm. seen monkeys, snake charmers, sheep on roof racks, chickens in boxes, everything. I walk around with one shoe on, I get looked at like I'm a freak. <laughs> no, put that down. Put it down. There's eye contact. Goodness sake. The flip flop crew is back in action. Yeah, baby. Now 
Now, are you ready for the Marrakesh madness? <laughs> it's very rare that we stay in a place for two nights, let alone go out for dinner two nights in a row. John said, because I didn't manage to find many treats today, we could go out for tea again. High let's, five. Let's go get harassed. One thing I do want to say is I cannot recommend this park up highly enough if you come to Marrakesh. I'll put a little link in the description, but it's one minute walk from the main square madness. But surprisingly, it's quiet at night. Madness incoming in three, two, one. Beef, chicken, lamb chop. Well, we'll be later. Thank you so much. Lamb chop is amazing. I remember you last time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's a dish. <laughs> you betrayed me. And you eat it somewhere else. Well, that was just as mad as yesterday. But for tonight's dinner, we've decided to go madness adjacent and in a little restaurant facing the crazy crowds rather than actually in there. And I'm not actually sure what we've just ordered. It's some kind of soup and some kind of flatbread. Well, we're still not actually sure what it was that we had, but we liked it so much we had another one and some chips. But now I have a bustilla, which is like a pastry filled with almonds and chicken and stuff. I had one last night, bloody loved it. Well, that was absolutely delicious, but I think you know where we're headed for dessert. Well, at this one, I get 15 for 50. Get in, and I get to pick them myself. Choose what you want. This is which one is almond with water flower. Oh, lovely. It's fig honey. Caramel. Which one is the best? It's you. Oh, he's a smooth talker. This one and this one. Oh. Welcome to Saints Bridge. Five. Welcome. Thirteen. Fourteen. This is Isham, legend. He's just subscribed. Welcome in Marrakesh. <laughs> Welcome. No, it's your second home. <laughs> Well, I tell you what, I've absolutely loved the madness tonight. I think yeah. I'm getting used to well, this. Well, I think it helps that, like, yesterday was a bit like, this is too manic <laughs> here. But, yeah, tonight was brilliant, wasn't it? It was amazing. But, and what a way to finish it as well, meeting that lovely bloke when we got our dessert. Yeah, lovely well. dinner as well. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but, yeah, I think we're going to leave you there anyway. So I think I'll leave you with this. I okay. hope you've been entertained. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> See you next week.